What's up everyone, it's Jasmine. On today's episode of The Slain Project, we're going to be talking about 62-year-old Ella Mae Begay. She went missing from the Navajo Nation in June 2021. And some of the information I got in this video came from the Facebook page trailing Ella Mae. And then I did a follow-up phone call with her niece, Seraphine. So if you go to fact check me and you can't find some of the information, that's where it came from. And if you would like to see more videos on missing and murdered indigenous people, click that subscribe button and the notification bell. Now let's get right into it. Ella Mae Begay. Ella Mae was 62 years old when last seen and is a Navajo tribal member. She is well respected and most known as a master rug weaver. Ella's rugs are exquisite and have been sold to people throughout the world. Her rugs were often sold at Mayloff on the Plaza, a well-established high-end gallery in Santa Fe, New Mexico. During the pandemic, Ella Mae was unable to sell her rugs at the storefront. According to her niece, Seraphine Warren, Ella Mae had asked friends and family if they wanted to purchase rugs from her during the shutdown. Her niece helped her aunt out and purchased some of her treasured artwork. Seraphine has been very vocal and outspoken about her aunt's disappearance. Some people have tried to slander her hard work and dedication by saying she is trying to get famous from her aunt's disappearance. But in reality, Seraphine has been a great advocate for Ella Mae and has done everything in her power to help bring her home. She not only is an advocate for Ella Mae, but for all missing and murdered indigenous people. Ella Mae lived in a very rural area on the Navajo Nation. The Navajo Nation is 27,000 square miles and spans across three states, Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. Ella Mae lived in Sweetwater, Arizona, near the Utah border. She lived by herself. Her husband was murdered 20 years ago. She has a son named Gerald who lives in Denver and multiple relatives that live near her home. The closest one living next door, which is 50 yards away. Ella Mae's house is located about 10 miles from the main road, and there are numerous dirt roads around the area where Ella Mae's property is. It is very easy to get lost and turned around if you do not have prior experience being in the area. Also, it is possible to get in and out of her property without using the main road, if you know the way. Gerald said that he last talked to his mom on June 12, 2021. They were making plans for him to bring his daughters down for a visit. Ella Mae was very cautious during the COVID outbreak, which hit the Navajo Nation hard. She rarely left her home and did not allow visitors, not even her own family. Gerald has lived in Denver for 25 years. Because of the COVID outbreak, he did not make his yearly visit back home to see his mom. He stated that his mother was very excited for the upcoming visit when they last spoke on the phone. The phone call was very pleasant and lasted for 45 minutes. Reports say that Ella Mae was last seen on Monday, June 14, 2021, driving her truck near her home. And this is where things start to get shady, so to speak. Without getting into too much detail for privacy reasons, one of Ella Mae's relatives was in a relationship with a man who we will call Lenny. Lenny has a son named Preston Tolf, who was 21 years old at the time and lived in Thoreau, New Mexico. Preston was visiting his dad on June 14th at the place he shared with Ella Mae's relative. He became belligerent with his dad and was asked to leave. Preston did leave, but it is unknown where he went after he left. It is not entirely clear if Preston knew Ella Mae but I am pretty sure that he probably knew who she was. Media reports say that an unnamed relative, and remember, multiple relatives live nearby, but they said a man tried to break down their door in the early morning hours of Tuesday, June 15th. When this person could not get in, they started walking towards Ella Mae's house. 
At about 2.30 a.m., LMA's truck was spotted leaving her residence. And some sources say that Preston was seen driving the truck at some point. The truck is a 2005 silver Ford F-150 with an Arizona license plate of AFE-7101. LMA was reported missing to the Shiprock PD District at 10.55 a.m. on June 15th, a little over eight hours after her truck was seen driving away from her residence. I am not entirely sure who discovered her missing or why the police were not notified sooner because of the man trying to break down the relative's door. In a strange coincidence, the tribal police were in the area around LMA's home on June 14th. There was a call of a domestic disturbance. Preston Tolth had been fighting with people he knew at a nearby residence. It is not publicly stated whose house this was. When she was reported missing, officers remembered the prior call for the domestic issue. They were able to track everyone down that was at the house and question them. Everyone except for Preston. This is how he became a person of interest. This was officially announced on Wednesday, June 16th. As the news spread throughout LMA's family that she was missing, most of them eventually met up at her residence. Seraphine stated that when she showed up, there were numerous tire tracks in LMA's front yard for multiple people coming and going. No mention of the inside of the house, but it more than likely had been shuffled through too. The last place LMA was last known to be had been severely contaminated. The gate was eventually closed to the house and only investigators are allowed inside. Seraphine's uncle wanted her to stop by and help him review surveillance footage from his security camera. He lives about seven miles west of LMA. They were checking the tape to see if she had stopped by recently to obtain her license plate number. She had not been by recently, so they were unable to get the plate number at that time. But it was noted that Lenny, Preston's dad, had been seen leaving on June 14th at about 2.30 p.m. and returning about 10.30 p.m. Navajo Nation PD has stated that since day one, they have been interviewing witnesses, canvassing the area, and following every lead coming in. Cell phone pings were also obtained, and the surveillance video was also reviewed by officials. Cursory searches were conducted immediately by family members on the 15th, and an official search was started on June 16th by investigators. The first four days of searching focused on a nine-mile radius around LMA's home. A tip was received the second weekend of July that led to searches near Anath, Montezuma Creek, and the San Juan River in southern Utah, an area that is also part of the Navajo Nation. The Thoreau, New Mexico area also was searched. Nothing was ever found. Around this same time on July 12th, the FBI had asked Seraphine to stop her searches. Family had been continuously searching for any sign of LMA or her truck. They searched on foot, ATV, horseback, assisted by drones, and even used an airplane. And this was the summertime, so the temperatures often soared far above 100 degrees. This extreme heat totally exhausted the search crews. Family members did eventually start search parties again after no progress was made by investigators. Other families that also have missing family members also scour the reservation. A lot of them don't find their family members either. The good thing about all these searches is that they can also find remains of other missing people that are not their family members. On Thursday, June 17th, Preston was located in Thoreau, New Mexico and arrested on unrelated charges of battery involving a family member. He was held at the Crown Point Detention Center.
He also had warrants out of Farmington and was extradited there under orders from Navajo Nation President Jonathan Nez. Preston was highly intoxicated when he was arrested and was not cooperating with investigators' questions. He was soon released after being questioned, not sure why he wasn't held pending his court dates for his warrants. On June 20th, 2021, it was officially announced that the disappearance of Ella Mae Begay was being reclassed as a homicide. As a result, her case was forwarded to the Navajo Nation Department of Criminal Investigation and the FBI. The Navajo Nation police are still assisting and are still listed as the main point of contact for any tips. Ella Mae's family says they were not notified in person of the reclassification to homicide and that they had to learn this from the media. They are also frustrated because updates are few and far between. Preston still is having run-ins with the law, the most recent in February 2021. An article in the local newspaper stated that he had robbed and stabbed a man. He was again highly intoxicated and stated he wanted to kill himself. Ella May's niece, Seraphine Warren, continues to hold prayer walks to bring awareness to this case. She will often walk from Ella May's home to Window Rock, Arizona, which is about 150 miles away. She has met with President Nez numerous times and says that he can do more to help. The Navajo Nation has many cases of missing and murdered indigenous people. Currently, there are over 60 missing people on the Navajo Nation. Tribal members rely on their president to address this crisis. In fact, President Nez and his wife have attended many MMIW meetings at state levels. And First Lady Nez was appointed as a member of the New Mexico MMIW Task Force. Tribal members would like to see President Nez pull his resources together and see more action, education, and prevention. The need for safer communities is at a very critical level right now. The perpetrators of these crimes need to be shown that they cannot get away with what they are doing and also need to be held accountable. Police Chief Philip Francisco stated that current trends on the Navajo Nation point towards domestic violence and alcohol abuse as contributing factors of the missing on the Navajo Nation. He went on to say this about LMA's case, quote, This is not a random crime. We know who these people are. They're connected or related to the family, end quote. With that being said, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Investigators in this case are having a hard time with this because there is no body and the pickup truck has never been located. I believe that multiple people are involved in a conspiracy about her disappearance and this makes uncovering the truth so much more difficult. No motive has ever been mentioned. In similar cases, financial gain, sexual motivation, and silencing a witness to a crime is often the reason. Ella Mae Begay was 62 years old when she went missing. She is 5 feet 1 inches tall and weighs between 110 and 120 pounds. She wears glasses and has short hair. She possibly could have been in her pajamas considering the time her truck was seen leaving her property. Time goes by and loyalties change. If you have any information about the disappearance of Ella Mae Begay, please contact the FBI or the Navajo Nation Shiprock Division at 505-368-1350. There is currently a $5,000 reward for information leading to Ella Mae Begay. Please also consider donating to help fund searches for Ella Mae. Please refer to the information on the screen. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you know what happened to Ella Mae Begay, please do not be afraid to speak up. And I hope to see you in my next video.